This video is sponsored by The Coldest Water. They make very high quality water bottles, but it's not just water. These are also for coffee. They've got mugs. They've got giant, huge jugs that you would take to the beach or camping, something like that. And they've got smaller bottles that you might cycle with or drink out of at home. Uh, I do cycle a fair bit, but I find myself using this most of the time actually just at home instead of having to get up and out of my office every 20 minutes to refill my cup. So these are very nice products. They keep your water cold longer. They keep your coffee warm longer. And with code UC10, you get 10% off your entire order. Check them out, support the channel, and thanks for watching. Hey guys, welcome back to Unqualified Critics. In this video, we're talking about an interview between Mel B, the chief architect, it seems like, behind the Arcade 1UP Pinballs from Zen Studios, who handles the software for the 1UP Pinballs, and a YouTube channel called Blockade. If you're really into pinball, check out their channel. But in this video, I'm just going to talk to you about the section of this interview that deals with Arcade 1UP Pinball, because I think that's what you guys all want to hear about. To me, there was a lot of good news in this interview, uh, but the most interesting element was this. Mel explained that for years he's been pushing for a physical hardware solution for virtual pinball. They finally got it to market and they partnered with Arcade Went Out, the rest is history. But he said because he's been hard selling this internally for years, he was the one who was optimistic. He was the one with high expectations that this was going to sell really well. And yet it exceeded his wildest expectations. So the Arcade Went Up sales numbers apparently have been a huge success. They're barely out to retail, so clearly this is exceeding what their internal plans were. That is, you know, not good news if you're trying to get your hands on one, but if you're planning to be with this platform for a while, it means it has a future. You know, these guys like money, and I fully expect them to continue to invest in this. This could end up being a huge part of the Arcade One Up business. Um, in fact, I think it will be a huge part of the Arcade One Up business. And Zen Studios standing behind it so firmly is awesome because they're the ones that Arcade One Up relies on for the software. Honestly, if they abandon the project, that would really compromise things, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Mel said, look, we've got all these different platforms we have to support, the VR, the mobile, the console, the PC, where you can play Pinball FX from Zen Studios. We now view these physical tables as the next platform for us that we have to maintain into the long term. So it raises the stakes for them. It's another platform they have to invest in supporting and maintaining. But it means for us that we're not with like a dead orphaned product or with a product that has a really long future. And he was really clear that the first generation Arcade One Up Pinball that you and I own, that was the proof of concept to test out what people wanted from the market. Would retail pick this up? Could we sell it? It almost feels goofy even restating this because jesus of course he could sell this the market was wide open for this and in my opinion the success of the 2018 first gen arcade one ups proved that something like this with even a wider market with pinball uh would absolutely sell if you got the price right and the licensing and the look and the feel and all those were the challenges but if you could nail that would you be able to sell this cabinet of course and now everybody knows that. So they're going to continue to invest in it. And if you did buy that wave one product, don't be offended. He called it proof of concept. I was offended when I heard that interview and I heard that phrase. But then he followed it up with, we are going to carry you into the next generation of Arcade One Up Pinball. So it's been talked about before, but just because someone who works for Arcade One Up said something once doesn't mean that that's what will actually happen. But it sounds like here it is actually going to happen. And that is, you will get the Gen 1 PCB to be able to power your, your um, Gen 1 hardware, you get the, sorry, the Gen 2 PCB so that you can get hopefully the Gen 2 features, which presumably mean better resolution, online connectivity and all that stuff. So that is fantastic that we're gonna have that path forward because look guys, these were $600. They're big, they're heavy, they look nice, but they take up a lot of room. These can't just be an orphaned product. And that was really my fear jumping into this. It sounds like that is not the case we are going to be set up but then if we're dealing with still the gen 1 pcbs and i think we are going to be doing that for the foreseeable future i think we're a long way off from the second generation arcade one up pinball there's talk of parts shortages they're still trying to catch up to demand for these machines the attack from mars the marvel the star wars so we're a long ways off so where does that leave us with the issues we currently have well i can only speak to attack from mars but it has that problem with white water doesn't perform well um, it seems to lose frames. It's a very choppy experience. So the interviewer thankfully asked Mel directly, hey, what about these issues we've got today? 
Whitewater is unplayable on Attack from Mars. And we've got brightness issues on some of the displays. Can these things be fixed with a firmware patch? And Mel said, yes, we can fix that with a firmware patch. We're going to do a firmware patch. We need to get with Arcade One Up, work out the details, and get this stuff rolled out. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't have those details organized in advance. You know, hey, who's in charge of firmware updates? What exactly will be the process for rolling them out? They still have to figure that out. It was real clear to me from this interview. So it's going to be a while. Don't expect a firmware update in a week or two. I think we're probably talking about a couple of months, if I had to guess. But it was good to hear that they did acknowledge the issues. They are going to be, it doesn't sound like they are yet. But they are going to be working on the issues and they are going to be rolling out updates. And Mel said, look, we want to do one firmware patch for this Gen 1. We don't want to do multiple patches, so we want to make sure we collect all the issues, get our singular patch out, and get that out to the street. So hopefully soon, but don't get your hopes up too high that, that it'll be tomorrow or anything like that. There was talk of more uh, pinball licensors approaching Zen Studios wanting to get a pinball machine made for them. And the stories Mel told were just kind of joking, like these companies calling up Zen Studios and saying, hey, we want you to make a physical hardware unit for our office. You know, not necessarily for us to sell, just like as a cool decor item. And you could almost picture, you know, Stern Pinball or one of these big license holders for pinball makers. And that's a pretty neat story. But at the end of the day, what we need to know is who will actually allow their tables to be licensed for the Arcade One Up Pinball. And there was no announcement here for that, and I didn't expect an announcement. But Mel was pretty clear that the industry has taken notice. They're kind of beating down their door. They're wanting to participate. I would point out at this time that Arcade One Up has been doing some collaborative marketing with Stern Pinball. Stern is interesting because they do not work with Zen currently. They are kind of the big daddy of pinball these days. And the marketing that Arcade One Up has done with them wasn't about Arcade One Up Pinball at all. It was just about regular Arcade One Up cabinets and having them represented at Stern Pinball events. So unclear if that's the beginning and the end of this relationship. It's just a co-marketing deal. Or is there opportunity for them to license as pinballs? I guarantee you Arcade Run Up would love to get their hands on it. And the fact that there's such demand, there's a lot of money to be made. Uh, I, would, I would not be surprised if Stern jumps in, but who knows? And clearly there was no announcement here today. All right, so when asked directly, and I love this question, Mel, what do you want from your second generation pinball? Here was what he said, an online store, online tournaments, and additional hardware options. A low end like tabletop virtual pinball, which we've seen from, I think the company's called Sharpen or something like that. But those are where you just have a singular display and it's all about the, the pinball play experience. It's not really about room decor, but they're less expensive. So let's have that. Let's keep our $600 option in the middle. And then let's have a super premium option, which if I had to guess, we're probably talking around a thousand bucks. But he didn't get into price points. But to me, that again just shows the confidence that they do believe in this product line. Because if you start taking one product and split it out into three different formats, well, that's a lot of additional complexity and investment. So you're really investing in the long haul for this business. I thought that was great. Um, one of the things I would like to see that wasn't talked about here in this interview is assurance of replacement part availability. It sounded spiritually like Mel was kind of getting to that, at least in concept, that, hey, if you bought into the first gen hardware, we want to continue to support you. But we just need to know that these replacement parts are going to be available for purchase. So none of us end up with giant 90 pound doorstops for pinball machines. The other thing I noticed, and this would just be a small nitpick, but I'd love to see this in a software update. I didn't think anything of it in my review, but when you finish a pinball table, it dumps you back out into the menu. I'd rather stay in the pinball table. I really would. I think that supports this idea that this is a piece of furniture. I'm playing a real pinball machine versus the immersion breaking of dumping me back into the FX menu. So, and I know it's not pinball FX, but it looks and feels like pinball FX. I want to stay on my attack from Mars table, you know, until I actively back out of it. That I think would be a nice approach. So all in all, I really thought this interview was really good news. If you're a fan of Arcade or Not Pinball or you're kind of on the sidelines trying to debate, this was great news. But, you know, clearly we need more clarity. We need to know when is the update coming because, let's face it, one of the 10 tables on Attack from Mars is broken. Um, I would like to know as an owner who has my current Arcade or Not Pinball not functioning correctly, you know, I want to make sure these things are going to be covered by the warranty. And I want to know there's a path forward when the warranty expires, which is coming up around the corner. 
So those are still open questions, but overall, very good interview with Mel B. So check it out. I'll put a link below. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you soon.